The two bourrées from Bach's third suite are sweet. Um, rustic, bourrée is a rustic dance. Um, <laughs> There's a lot going on here. It seems very simple, but there's two voices, first of all, the one in green, the one in red, and again, and second voice. So we have a four bar phrase, but it has uh, two sub phrases. Um, so the first one is more straightforward. And the second one may be a little more um, uh, softer in tone. Now this might sound very romantic to you, but um, try to make that work for you and try to adopt it to your own uh, sensibilities. But I would um, not play the whole four bars as if it's one big chunk, because I do see a subphrase here. Um, excuse the construction outside. Here, again, we have two voices, the one in red, um, try and play it uh, just separately, this is the top voice, and then this is the bottom voice, and putting them together. You see, I also uh, change my articulation. I don't play everything on the string. I think that varying articulation adds another layer of richness, um, and uh, we should think about this in those dances. And so a little off the string for the bottom. Uh, and here, Rachel Podger uh, says, she's a wonderful Baroque violinist, uh, she says, bounce, 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 um, which I very much like. Um, again here, top voice, second voice, and, and then an answer. So uh, to play it again, uh, we have maybe a, a question. And an answer. And then we go on. And again, we have two voices. C, B, C, D, C, D, E. Much easier for me to say Do, Re, Mi, but um, we are in America, so. Uh, and finally, take a little time going down to the C. As you see, the intervals grow. Uh, so, uh, six, octave, and decima. And again, bounce, bounce, bounce. A little time before we go on. Um, um, so, yeah, I encourage you to think about those two voices all the time. Um, let's go on to the second bourrée. The second bourrée is uh, more linear. So, whereas the first bourrée was a little more vertical, here we have more chromatic. Um, and so, um, Try to find a right color that is uh, contrasting to the first bourrée. Um, here, I like using those long, longer bows uh, because I think uh, it creates a longer line. Again, we have those bounce, bounce, bounces in measure 16. Um, same as in the first beret, and then so here indulge, indulge in that D. Um, add the, I would add the vibrato only in the middle. Um, here I like uh, separating those uh, slurs, so to hear really the tia, 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 tia. It's a 
mm-hmm. Baroque technique, and um, I very much like it. Um, the Baroque bow, as um, I know you probably know, is uh, lighter at the tip. So naturally, when you play um, a longer bow, um, your sound will taper towards the end of the bow. Uh, and even with short bows, like here, it, uh, the bow does it naturally. And uh, with a modern bow, we have to help a little more. Um, you can also decide if you're going to do up and then subito piano. Or not. Maybe you, you do a diminuendo. And there's many ways of um, interpreting this. Uh, when you play the last octave, um, don't play them together. Uh, you don't hear the octave when you play it completely, unless it's out of tune, which we don't want. Um, so, uh, play the bottom slightly before the top. And finally, uh, something I talk about sometimes, but don't always have the courage to play myself, uh, the inegal option, uh, the last, the penultimate bar in the second bourree. Uh, and we know that it was uh, done. We're not sure Bach liked it, but um, it's certainly something to try and experiment with. Thanks for watching and see you next time.